Okay, I got a washing machine that won't drain very well. Now I was able to make it drain if I put it on the spin cycle, but it took a long time. And I can tell that there's both their stuff in the drain. I mean, tons of paper clips and stuff. And uh, so that's bad. But I think that there's maybe a coin or something down in the drain line that's cutting off. You see, it really didn't even drain fully. Agitator dogs are working good. So I'm going to go ahead and let it finish off a little bit of the spin cycle while I pull this down and take this apart. There it goes, kind of finishing off. I might actually. show you just how little it's draining. But we definitely still have a coin in there as well. There we go. Kind of reaching under the bin. Five cents. Okay, so now we're clear there. Let me go back to filling it a little. And what scared me was when I when I found it, it was filled all the way up to here. So that was a little scary. And it is on its large load setting. So I may actually have to adjust that setting if it, if it is draining okay. So I'm going to check the draining portion first and we're going to see how fast it drains this water out. Go ahead and stop it there. I just pushed it in. We're going to turn it to our spin. And we're going to need to engage the lid switch if we want to see what's going on. And I do. So we want to see how fast this drains. Let's see. Oh, well, that was actually pretty good. Our drain is clear now, so I'm wondering why I found it full. Because we're actually clear there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and it's on its large load setting. And we're going to see where this one shuts off. And I, I think we don't want to go, you know, above here. Again, when I found it, it was up to here, so... I'm thinking we might have to adjust the fill settings. You can see some rust down in there. Some of those paper clips sitting in there, and that was no good. This one needs some cleaning. I had to have to send have the cleaners come back because there's quite a bit of stuff here. You know, they should have got this in a a number of other things. There's some upper windows that are dirty. It is what it is. Sometimes you have to have them come back in order so they see things that you're seeing. Like this. And they clean them. That's a whole other story. <laughs> That's the story of being a maintenance supervisor. You make sure everything gets taken care of, taken care of properly. Oh, yeah, we're filling up with water here. My suspicion is we're overfilling. And I'll show you how to adjust that. There's there's an adjustment in the controls to adjust the, the level of the fill. This one, like I said, when I came, it was like here. So maybe why the cleaners didn't clean it, maybe they get freaked out and like, hey, this thing, I'm going to turn this thing off before it floods. And fortunately it didn't flood anything, so that's good. That's good. It's all dry here. So we're good there. But it's dirty. I need to clean a little bit more here. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I got them coming back. Yeah. 
All right, we're getting pretty full. And again, it didn't overflow, but definitely is further than I'd like to see it go. But again, there's a pretty easy adjustment on this. So. I might need to speed the film up a little bit. Oh, well that was good. That's right where we want it to stop. So, I'm gonna advance it to its drain cycle. Maybe they just left it to soak. I'm not sure. But all that was proper. Okay, let's advance a little bit. Got another turn. Got another turn. Got another turn. And up here's our spin and drain. towards the rinse cycle. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Sounds like maybe a coin in the in the pump. Sometimes what happens is the penny gets up against the side of the pump and uh, then it's rubbing against the pump eventually to spring a leak. We'll try pulling it off its balance. It finds its balance okay, so we're okay there. But given that I found a coin, given that I found all those clips. Paper clips. It just makes me think we've got something down there. So I'm gonna pull this apart and take a look and prove it out. We drained okay. And I can smell the pump. A weird, almost rubber, rubbery burning smell. And uh, again, my suspicion is that there's a coin in there and it's rubbing. And again, eventually it'll just rub a hole right in the side of the pump and then we'll have a big old mess. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. At least this is how I do them. Pretty, pretty easy way is to vacuum out our water. Looks like some lint buildup. Looks like a poor seal on the charter deal, so I could fix that too while I'm here. Just a little ceiling. Oh gosh, it's off. <laughs> so we did we did definitely need to reset that. So it's a good thing that we're here. I might have to come back with some tape because the whole thing is off. Not on at all. So, come back with some foil tape. This isn't the story I was intending to show you, but uh, you know, good thing to look out for. So, that was just blowing inside the area here rather than going inside there. So, slip that on better, and we'll come back and reset that. Now we'll have a good seal. That'll be that. Goodness gracious. Yep, we'll clean up here. I'll clean up here. Okay, I'll come back to that. That's another story. But these are the things we need to check for, right? Be careful. 
careful for my carpet because it's been cleaned already. Okay, so back here we've got two screws. A lot of times you'll be doing this blind, you won't be able to see them. The larger size on a 6 out of 1 screwdriver works really good for this. And again, a lot of times you'll be pretty much doing it blind. Um, so I'm be doing that now. And, you know, getting them out isn't so bad. Back in. But it's not too bad. Here's my six and one. Which, it's time for me to order a new six and one. Mine's not completely cooperating. A couple things going on. One is the smaller size nut driver is slipping. It's like kind of stripped a little bit. There's our screw. And we got the one on the other side. Same thing. Since this vent is off, I can kind of just move it out of my way. But the other thing that's going on with my screwdriver is it's not inserting all the way. Make it easy to drop it somewhere we don't want to, but see right here, it's not inserting all the way very well. So maybe I can just lube it. But uh, that's another story. Okay, so we got our second screw. Now that allows us to pull the whole deal forward, lift up, and then we can disconnect our disconnect right here on the lid switch. squeeze the little release tab there and pull it out and then when we pull this down we got to be careful not to lose our two little metal connection deals that connect from the back right here my camera overheated so the flash turned off so that's not fun anyway, now you can see those deals and they pass in from this side and set and they're just kind of funny that way so we don't lose those just like that some people tape them on just so it doesn't move around now you can see where they go into a little bit easier theory okay now the trick with this is to vacuum the water from right here pull this hose off you squeeze it and then use a wet dry vacuum and vacuum from right there that'll pull all your water out and make it much easier to work on and the other side is we've got two screws one here and one here, and a third one here that allows us to take the hose assembly up to make it easier to get to this one. So, you guys have seen me do this lots of times. Um, again, this is going to slow me down a little bit as my funky screwdriver. Because i got to kind of hold it with one finger to keep anything from... See, it wants to fall fall out. It's no fun if you drop it in there. Okay, so we can tip this up and over into here, and then now that'll give us free access to heat these ones. And you want to be careful in here, all these edges are sharp. It's all unfinished sheet metal. And it's real sharp. And it likes to give you a little cuts. There's that one. And the same on the other side. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera, but I'm doing this by myself. Got it. 
Okay, now that allows us to lift off the front of the door, which anchors on, there's two feet on each side, so we just lift up. There it is. And there's the two feet I was telling you about here and here. And then here's the pump on the side, and this is where I believe we were hearing all that noise coming from, so we need to get in there. And as I was telling you up top, first thing first, we're going to pull this off and pull any water that's stuck um, from out there in there. And that way we have much less water that'll drain to the bottom here. So I've got a rag here that I'm going to go ahead and kind of slip underneath here. And our disconnect is pulled, so um, we no longer have power going to the motor. It's far better to turn off the breakers or unplug the machine before taking any of this apart. Water and electricity, the deadly mix. My wet dry vacuum. Unfortunately, my camera blanked out here, but what I did was vacuum from okay. the hose going down to the yeah. pump. And that's usually all you need to vacuum to clear the water, make less water uh, when you take off the hose. Okay. On this one, when and I pulled we the hose pull that off, and a bunch that. of water came out back out so, from the drain side, here. and so I decided to vacuum there too, just to make sure it was clear. When I actually want to pull from the drain line, and kind of want to make sure that the drain line's not kinked or anything, because. Yeah, it seems like we're okay. So I might actually switch it to the blower. Yeah, that's vacuum. So where you want to vacuum from is the black hose that's sticking up. Usually that's all you need to vacuum from. One that's shaking around there a little bit. And that clears that all the water that's left trapped in the bin. Normally you don't need to vacuum that side, but just because of that little bit of water that fell out when I did it, I just wanted to. Okay, now I've got my wet dry vacuum ready, and we're going to pull the pump off. And that way I can vacuum from there when we pull this off. And we've also got our rag down. And what we can do is pull the hoses off. Here's the small one. And here's the big one. won't be too big a deal just to get a good better grip on this. There we go. Now we'll be able to slip that on after. Okay. And now we're gonna take the pump off. And the way we do that is flat blade screwdriver works really good.
Right there. Right there. And these just turn into their little slot. So I reinsert that so we don't lose it. And we have to pull our pump off. And I still got the small hose to pull off, so I'm gonna pull the small hose off. There we go. And there's just a little bit of water left. And you can see blackness in there. And I'm gonna dump this. I'm actually gonna take you to the since dumping it on the floor. Got a few things to check out here. First is this one. As I suspected, it was rubbing up against the side. Now, eventually, it would wear a hole in the side of the pump. So we got lucky that it did and we'll give our pump just a few little turns. I think we're good there. Make sure we get the penny out of there. We don't want that going down the drain. I already did that one. That's no, happened to happen twice. There we go. Pump's all clear. We're lucky that one didn't clog the drain. And now let's peek in the drain. I'll see if my flash will work this time so we can get a better look in there because we can't see very well. So, I was able to turn my flash on. It'll probably turn off in a little bit. And we're all clear there. But that's right where a lot of times a penny will, will uh, get caught up straight ahead. So we're all nice and clear. So then you want to put your wet dry vacuum onto these and pull these through, make sure they're all nice and clear. So that's great. So now we can put our pump back on and get it going again. Okay, so now we'll reset the pump. I like to turn these up and down unless I just happen to get lucky. But it's usually much easier to turn it so it's nice and straight up and down. Um, we need to slide our clamp back over the big one. So there we go there. That'll make that easier, better. Here's the big one. Okay, got my clamp lined up. Here's our clip that goes for the bottom and the top. Here's the bottom one. So, we've got to turn this in just the right way. There's the bottom one. And go ahead and I just kind of moved it over and clip it on and then the top one the same thing just I'm inserting so on the top one we're just inserting it and turning it and then I'm pushing it over and pushing it down easier said than done There we go, clipped in. And now got the top clamp. I'm gonna release that where it needs to go. Right there. And then the bottom one, I'm gonna push it on. And then we've gotta slide the clamp. And we've gotta squeeze that down to move it forward. not in as good as I'd like to be so I need to move that clamp forward a bit. I 
again be careful it's all sharp metal here there we go now I'm nice and slipped up towards the front okay now we're nice and slipped up towards the front where we want to be where it's going to hold everything on we're good there and the important one don't forget to reset your hose if you took this one off here just push that on and just have to find the clamp slip down there we go got it a lot of times this one I can use my pliers which kind of works easier for me Now that's nice and strong. Need to go. Okay, I just need to come back with some tape for the dryer hose. But uh, while the lid is off, now we can check it for leaks and all that good stuff and make sure everything's good. Now we can put the lid back on and use the disconnect where there's an easy way to make a jumper wire. I'm trying to see if I have a jumper wire with me. Maybe so, maybe no. Got a real tiny one right here. Well, I'll just use the lid because uh, a lot of you probably won't have, might not have a jumper wire with you. So what we can do is just carefully reset my drain hose. I just reset my drain hose back up there. Temporary. And now we'll plug in the disconnect. Okay, plugged in. And now we can run the machine and check for leaks while we've got it open. We can see what's going on. We can hear it better. So, there's the water. And another thing is this should be set up a little bit higher. It often leaks from here, so I'm going to fix that up in a minute here. Because that's another common leak point. We'll want to move this hose all the way up. So in fact, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And, well, Actually, we've got enough water to test it, so I'm going to stop this, advance it, and we're going to check it. Yay! Now we're nice and quiet. Nothing whining, nothing rubbing, and nothing leaking. All those are important. Okay, so we did precisely what we're supposed to do. So that's good. This is all clear. Here. Okay. We'll go ahead and stop that there. We're going to re pull or disconnect again. There. Since we can, go ahead and do this here. Again, I should have brought my channel locks, but I didn't. And we need to get this far enough up that it doesn't unspring on us, so this is the tricky one. Yeah. And in some ways this may be easier, in some ways it may not be. <laughs> anyway, gotta kind of, it's so thin 
so long that's been moved. It didn't want to move. Okay, there we go. Got it adjusted. And now it's going to be re-grabbing that and moving it on up. where we want it. And we'll insert this here. There we go. And before I get that far, we actually want to put our front, front lid back, but now we're ready. Okay, so the front lid, we have to lift up the front with these square holes here go over these two notches, the teeth that stick up, those go through the, the holes, hold the front on, and then we use our screws to anchor through to right here. So, a little bit easier said than done, but it's not too bad. Okay, get my screwdriver ready. I'm going to get all my screws. So I'm already there. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this, and this is the fun, bit of fun part. And I just noticed this little clamp came off, and it just goes and holds and positions everything so that it's nice and out of the way. It also keeps stuff from falling down, so a couple different things going on there. Okay, so this, like I said, it's a little easier said than done because a lot of it you're kind of, you're doing a little blind. You got one side. And it just takes a bit of patience and working with it. Set in our screws Go inside. So I'll start with this one so we can get the hose reset. Okay, got this started. There we go. And then our hose is just going to go on here. Like that. And we wrap these up into their little holder. And we've got one screw that goes here. Right here. Okay. But yeah, this is a common, if you see a leak on the left side, look for that one and move that up because as this machine wobbles around sometimes, starts moving and moving that down a little bit so just something to be aware of okay next we've got our other deal here all right and now is setting our deal on top again we're going to make sure this deal 
on this deal, seated down like so. Just gonna kind of use gravity and how I lift it up to reposition it. But don't forget to re-plug in your disconnect before you set in your screws. <laughs> Done that before. Okay. So again, I'm just kind of using gravity here. it up and plug in our disconnect before we get any further. Okay, I'm plugged in and now on the front you can see these two teeth here. We want to slip up and into those just like that. And here's where we'll line up our screws. Now I'll see if I can get my flash to work again. Okay, got the flash on so that'll help. And you guys probably won't be able to see much and honestly when you do this job you just won't be able to see very much like now I'm, I'm doing it blind I, I can't see and so it's just a matter of feeling for it and just kind of being patient with it sometimes you have to reposition the lid a little bit I got it Right there, and that will be tightening down in a minute. It's hard to see, even with the even with the camera, the angles are odd. Okay. Hey, got lucky there. Yeah, on the first, on the first try. Okay. So now. Get in there, tighten down, and we'll just go one final run through and verify. Nothing's leaking, nothing funny going on. Okay, we're in, we're in. Okay, so I'll go ahead and turn that on. While we're here, we can feel for any leaks here. Make sure there's nothing going on. Got our supplies. Everything's good there. And now I can slip this on here. And come back with some foil tape. Fix that up. It'll make that much better. Yeah, no sense putting this back on yet. Just go ahead and stop. Advance it to the drain cycle. Pull it. Of course, it's not going to go because we have our lid switch. Everything's working like a shed. Back in business. Okay. Now the other thing is since this was leaking all this lint back here, probably a good idea to pull this down and get into our controls and vacuum out the controls. So I'll spare you showing you the vacuuming part. Let's get in here, we pull this down. Pull that down, and there we go. See? Got to vacuum all that out, clear it out. We don't want all that dust there. And uh, I don't think you need to see me vacuum it. But once we're done, when you put it back, you have to pull these down again with your pliers. You can't just push it closed. You got to pull it down and then set it. I show it more in other videos, but uh, that's the story there. Anyway, thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Yeah, it's fixing up the laundry center. Thanks for watching. Okay, just don't forget to turn off the power before you vacuum it out. And uh, right here is the pressure adjustment switch that I was telling you for the water level uh, to adjust it. A little adjustment sets you there. Uh, obviously, if you tighten it, it's going to push, the screw is going to sit further and push the button in. 
to shut it off faster. And reverse you know, to adjust it. So, yep. Anyway, and you can see as you adjust your different size load, it just moves that wheel closer in or further in. So, very simple to adjust, test. Anyway, thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Over and out. Um, last thing I was going to show you was when you go to reset these, is you don't want to force anything very gently. What you have to do is re pull this back down and then set it and let it go. And sometimes it takes a little maneuvering. Sometimes you have to kind of do one side or the other first. And, and uh, just the key is not, not to force anything. To force anything is it's very easy to bend the little prongs that hold it in place. You, just kind of, you have to kind of take your time with it. Sometimes, sometimes you have to scoot it around a little bit to get it to where it'll engage. And again, you just don't want to force anything. There we are. All right. Yep, just need some foil tape. Finish cleaning things up a bit. Be all set. Thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Over and out. Okay, came back, got it all taped up. I like to take the joints here as well and that it just keeps a uh, nice tight airflow. So I'll set this over to dry, move it to dry. And we have no air. This is a yeah. special foil tape. It's a high heat foil tape. So it's not your normal foil tape. Everything's nice and sealed. Good to go. Problem is now. Do you hear that? You hear that clicking? <laughs> oh yeah. We got a coin. Coin, coin, coin. So I guess I'll show you how to get that. Yeah. So be on the lookout for the upcoming dryer video on the clinking noise in the dryer. Cha-ching, too.